Louis Campania, a notorious figure in the annals of American organized crime, had a life that read like a script from a gangster movie. Born on the 30th of March 1900 in Brooklyn, New York, to Italian immigrant parents, Campania's early life was marked by the struggles typical of immigrant families in the early 20th century. The Campania family lived in a neighborhood where poverty and crime were commonplace, factors that undoubtedly influenced the young Louis. Campania's childhood was not one of ease or privilege. His family's financial struggles and the need to contribute to the household may have nudged him towards the criminal path at a young age. The streets of Brooklyn during this era were a harsh training ground, where survival often meant bending or breaking the rules. This environment, combined with a lack of substantial educational and employment opportunities, created a fertile ground for a life of illegality. As a teenager, Campania became involved in petty crimes, a common beginning for many who would later rise in the ranks of organized crime. His activities soon caught attention of more established criminals, serving as an entry point into the world of organized crime. It was this path that eventually led him to Chicago, the city that would become synonymous with gangster history during Prohibition. In Chicago, Campania's criminal career took a significant turn. He became involved with the Chicago Outfit, a powerful and notorious criminal organization. It was here that he met and formed a working relationship with Al Capone, one of the most infamous gangsters in American history. Campania's association with Capone and other high-profile gangsters of the era was a testament to his rising status within the criminal underworld. Campania, often known by his nickname Little New York, became an integral part of the Chicago Outfit. His activities ranged from bootlegging during Prohibition to other criminal enterprises that were part of the outfit's operations. His proximity to Al Capone not only elevated his status within the organization, but also put him at the center of some of the most significant criminal activities of the time. During the 1920s and early 1930s, Prohibition in the United States created a lucrative opportunity for organized crime to flourish, and Campania was deeply involved. He played a key role in the Chicago Outfit's bootlegging operations, helping to control the illegal liquor trade in Chicago. The profits from bootlegging were enormous, and this period saw the rise of the Outfit as one of the most powerful criminal organizations in the country. Well, specific details of many of Campania's activities remain shrouded in the secrecy typical of organized crime, he was reputedly involved in various acts of violence and heists that were common among gangsters of the era. These activities included armed robbery, extortion, and possibly involvement in gangland killings. Although direct evidence linking him to specific violent acts is scarce, due to the clandestine nature of these crimes. Campania's life of crime inevitably led to encounters with law enforcement. He faced numerous arrests, although many of these did not lead to significant legal consequences, due to the difficulties in securing convictions against well-connected mobsters at the time. The lack of hard evidence and the outfit's influence often stymied legal efforts against him. One of the more notable legal challenges Campania faced was in the late 1940s when he, along with several other Chicago Outfit members, was indicted and subsequently convicted for extortion. This conviction was a significant blow, as it was one of the few instances when Campania and his associates were successfully prosecuted. The trial demonstrated the shifting attitude of law enforcement and the judicial system towards organized crime marking the beginning of a more aggressive approach in tackling the Mafia's influence. His rise within the organization was attributed to his loyalty, savvy business acumen, and the ability to navigate the treacherous waters of organized crime. He was not just an enforcer, but also a strategist, playing a crucial role in the outfit's expansion and operations. His relationship with Al Capone, one of the most notorious gangsters in American history, was particularly notable. Campania was one of Capone's closest associates, serving as a key advisor and confidant. This close association with Capone significantly elevated Campania's status and influence within the organization. Besides Capone, he also had relationships with other prominent figures in the outfit, helping to strengthen his position and extend his influence. Campania's influence extended beyond the Chicago outfit. He was known and respected, and often feared, in the broader underworld of organized crime. 
his ability to broker deals, manage the outfit's operations, and maintain relative peace among various factions, underscored his power and savvy as a mobster. Following his involvement in high-profile criminal activities, Campania's life took a quieter turn, especially after his release from prison in the late 1940s. He lived a more subdued life, although he remained connected to the outfit in a less active capacity. Louis Campania died on the 30th of May 1955. His death marked the end of an era for the Chicago outfit. The circumstances of his death were not dramatic or violent, as often is the case with notorious gangsters. Instead, he died of natural causes, a departure from the violent end that befell many of his contemporaries. As we conclude our journey through the life of Louis Campania, it's clear that his story is more than just a footnote in the vast saga of American organized crime. It's a testament to the complexities of power, loyalty, and survival in a world operating in the shadows of society. Thank you for joining us on this historical journey. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into history's most intriguing figures and events. Until next time.